Homeworld plus gem shards equals world domination. Hello interwebs, I'm Eric and welcome to The Looney Turtle. Throughout Steven Universe, there have been a few mentions of gem shards, yet their origins, for me at least, have been a bit of a mystery. Since they've been appearing more often in recent episodes, I thought now was a good time to talk about them. The first mention of these shards was in Frybo. While Steven's mind wanders, oh, I can't just start listening now! I'd be lost! Pearl is supplying us with some very useful information. These shards have a powerful partial consciousness that has been harnessed by gems throughout history in order to create semi-sentient drone soldiers with the capacity to follow basic orders. Gems once created an army of these drones, but found their obedience waned as the shards overdeveloped inside their uniforms and turned on their commanders. You see, any shard inside any sort of container could become a monster. This is a very nice basis for what the gem shards are. They were created to be drone soldiers, but since they overdeveloped inside their containers, they had to be stopped. While it can't be said for sure that the shards we see in this episode and the ones we see later on are the same, I believe that they were created in a similar way and might have a similar purpose. Well, where did these gem shards come from? Well, judging by Garnet's argument in keeping it together, it wasn't the kindest of methods. So this is what Homeworld thinks of fusion. We couldn't have known they would do this. This is where they've been. All the ones we couldn't find. They've been here the whole time. Rose couldn't have known. This is punishment for the rebellion. It's not our fault. For those of you who don't know, which I would hope to be a very low number, a long while ago there was a rebellion led by Steven's mother that led to a lot of gems getting shattered as well as the creation of the corrupted gems. The crystal gems were the rebels of Homeworld, but in the current day, Garnet, Pearl, Amethyst, and Steven are all that remain. Judging by how Ruby and Sapphire talk about this, after the war, the shattered remains of the warriors were collected but a few were never found. What Garnet discovers in this scene is that Homeworld was collecting the remains of shattered gems in order to run some tests. Why would they be running tests with shattered gems? It can't be said for sure, but I believe they were trying to create more perfect drone soldiers. But they turned on the commanders, didn't they? Yes, because they were able to overdevelop inside their containers. But the ones we've seen recently are built from the arms and legs of already developed gems, leaving us with a partial consciousness we heard about in Frybo, while also removing the possibility of overdeveloping inside a container. The cluster we see in keeping it together appears to be distorted and underdeveloped, almost like it was an experiment in the works. While the other ones we've seen, in Nightmare Hospital and so on, are starting to look more whole. It's almost like they're evolving over time. But what does this all mean? Well, I was originally going to say that Peridot was amassing an army of these cluster drones, but after Catch and Release came out, I had to rethink this theory a little bit. Peridot mentions multiple times that she needs to get off this planet before the cluster hatches. She could be referring to a giant army of cluster drones that's all going to hatch on the same day, but when it rains, pretty much confirms that this is an egg that's going to hatch from the center of the Earth. Well, how did they get that thing at the center of the Earth? Well, the answer to that comes in the form of a Tumblr thread by Baby Dragon Maybe, where they bring up the geode. Their theory is that the geode is the cluster, but once again, when it rain confirms that the cluster is at the center of the Earth, but the geode could still play a role. Perhaps it's some sort of access point to the cluster. When you think about it, that kind of makes sense and explains why Peridot's afraid of thunderstorms. It's happening! What? The cluster! Really? What else could be making that horrible? Ah! on the earth from the inside. This is it. This is the end of the world. <laughs> She's freaking out because there are thunderstorms surrounding the geode access point, and it's obviously some sort of sign that the cluster is hatching. But that's just a couple of ideas. For now, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Until then, if you want to see some more interesting analysis and speculation videos, then consider becoming a Patreon today, and feel free to check out some of my other videos, like this one about Five Nights at Freddy's. That, or you could head over to Cartoon Universe and learn about Steven's hidden power. With all that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.